Oh my God, Labour, 191. That's the worst since 31. Oh my God, they've smashed it. That'll be horrific for Labour. Yes, I thought it would be closer. I think most people thought the polls were It's 10 p.m. on Thursday night and the BBC have just announced the exit poll for the general election and it predicts a whopping 86 seat majority for Boris Johnson's party. All this talk of a hung parliament or a tight result seems to be blown out of the water. It's only an exit poll. It's very early days. That majority could shrink once the actual results come in, but two things are clear. One, Mr Johnson's gamble to corn election has paid off, and two, Jeremy Corbyn has suffered a huge defeat. Going down below 200 seats would be the party's worst result since the Second World War and in modern times. So we'll see as more results come in now, but the crucial thing does seem to be that that gamble of targeting voters in the North and the Midlands has paid off, and Boris Johnson is going to win a majority and deliver Brexit. We've just had the first Conservative seat gain of the night in Blythe Valley, a former mining constituency in Northumberland. The Conservatives have shockingly taken this seat. This is not the kind of place Tories normally hold, but it is a part of that red wall of leave-supporting, post-industrial places Boris Johnson was hoping to win. But even in their wildest dreams, this is not a seat Conservative HQ thought they would take, because back in 1997, this seat had a 17,000 Tory majority and has been represented for many years by Ronnie Campbell, a former miner himself. No more, it's the first Tory gain of election night. So we've just had one of the first big red war results in of tonight, which is Workington. Workington was defined by a centre-right think tank as the kind of place Boris Johnson needs to win to form a majority. And as we've just seen, that's gone from Labour to the Conservative with a big swing. The Tories won it with a 4,000 majority. It also means we have the first shadow cabinet lost the night, with Sue Heyman, the shadow environment minister, losing her seat. Loyal supporters of Jeremy Corbyn, like Richard Bergen here, have been out trying to explain this bad result for Labour tonight. They've been saying that it's all to do with Brexit, nothing to do with the party's manifesto or the policies it put forward here for the reasons it's lost lots of its working class seats like Lee in Greater Manchester, the Vale of Clwyd in Wales and of course Workington up in the Lake District. This matters because there's going to be a big battle over the next 24 hours about whether Jeremy Corbyn, the Labour leader, should resign now or at some point later. Given the sheer scale of Labour's defeat, the pressure on Mr Corbyn will be huge. I want to also make it clear that I will not lead the party in any future general election campaign. I will discuss with our party to ensure there is a process now of reflection on this result and on the policies that the party will take going forward. It's 3.30 a.m. and we've just had two decisive moments on election night. First of all, Jeremy Corbyn. He's just been re-elected as the Labour MP for Islington North, but has announced he's standing down as party leader at some point in the near future. He's not going to quit straight away, though. He wants to oversee the contest to replace him because Labour's defeat is so big tonight. His whole project, the Corbynism politics that were in that manifesto, is under threat. He'll want to try and have a big say in who his successor is to make sure the party doesn't swing back to the centre-left. The second moment then was Sedgefield. That's the constituency once represented by Tony Blair for almost 25 years. That's gone Conservative for the first time since 1931 and really that's what you need to know about the results tonight. Jeremy Corbyn's leadership is at an end. It has failed to win a majority from the British people and meanwhile the Conservatives are eating into Labour's traditional heartlands.